Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is Letters to Blue. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. Um, every Thursday, I take letters and comments uh, of people asking advice or maybe they have a story they wanna share and I put it on one episode. <laughs> so it's sort of like Q&A Tuesday, which is the number one question and answer show about medical coding airing on Tuesday. Sort of like that, but an extended version, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the letters. And if you would like to have your letter or comment submitted for next week's Letters to Blue, just comment below or shoot me an email. and. I'll put it on a future show. All right, so let's get started. All right, first letter. Thank you for what you do. I have been a student and I got my certificate in medical coding and billing. I don't feel secure in my knowledge to get a good job. I am still searching and I'm not working, so the books to keep studying you suggest are too high right now. I'm diagnosed with a learning disability and feel it's got something to do with my ability to do good in this field. I respect what you say about studying and also I am also trying, but it seems like I'm having trouble with time management, memory. I just wanted to make something more of myself besides working in factories and jobs that are not going anywhere. All of your videos give many that care about watching hope and I wanted to tell you that you're doing a great job. Keep it up and love that you drive a positive platform. Thank you very much for your sweet words. I will start off by saying this, um, as far as like your confidence level, because it sounds like, yes, you are unsure because you have this learning disability. I will have you know that there are people that are medical coders now that have learning disabilities. Some have other, other issues that they still, they don't allow that to affect their ability to be able to work. Everybody has the ability to do whatever it is that they want to do, regardless of whatever challenges that they may face. If you allow your challenges to overtake whatever it is that you want to do, then you'll never get anything done, right? So it's entirely up to you. And as far as like getting like time management and things like that, those things will come with time and your confidence level will boost the more that you study. Now, as far as this comment about that uh, the books that I suggest are too high. I always look for the cheapest possible books. If you, um, I do leave links to the Amazon books that I, or the books on Amazon that I recommend. Uh, and I do leave the link for them um, in the description box below. And yes, it does give me a percentage if you click on it, big deal. But um, the reason that I do that is so that way you guys can see what it is. You don't necessarily have to click on the links because they do give you the titles. But I always look for the cheapest possible books. Not only that, I give you guys um, all the free sites that I find and any free information that I can find, I give it to you guys. So you don't necessarily have to get books. If people ask me what books do I recommend for studying, I, I have to give a recommendation. I mean, I love books, so I'm gonna give my recommendations. Not to say that you guys have to get these in order to study. Because like I said, I give you guys plenty of resources that are free. So this that's just something that you have to look at. Those are the detail things. Uh, I'm not telling you guys you have to order these books. I'm just saying that these are the books that I recommend if you're asking me what I recommend. Uh, again, I have lots of free websites and free uh, PDFs that I tell you guys about. Uh, a lot of them come from CMS. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. There's a Medicare Learning Network there. If you are brand new to medical coding or even if you are a veteran medical coder, you need to go there and get yourself educated. There's plenty of free advice on their free educational materials. So when it comes to what we do as medical coders, it, it is about trying to get as much knowledge as you possibly can. Does it get expensive? Yes, it does. But look at what we're doing. We are in an intellectual field. It is going to cost you money. What medical coders get paid demands that those coders are educated. So with that comes, you have to pay a fee for that. There, there's always going to be a fee. This is why I say, if I can find a free resource, I will share it. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't be out there looking for free resources as well. And that's, that's part of the reason why I have $1 a month pledge levels on my Patreon channel. 
Patreon, if you don't know, is a lot like YouTube, uh, but there I share a lot more about coding. I do coding exercises, both inpatient and outpatient. I make up crossword puzzles every week to help with medical terminology. And I talk about myself on the channel because uh, I think if you're paying for entertainment, <laughs> you should be entertained by something about me, uh, but it's on a more personal level. So that's why I do that because I think everybody, regardless of what your financial status is, should have access to quality um, products as far as like, you know, guidance and things like that when it comes to medical coding. So that's why I say a dollar pledge level, but anybody else would be charging way more than that. I don't do that because I don't worry about money when it comes to this kind of stuff. I don't, I look for the cheapest possible way to do things. And this is why I tell you guys go to the Goodwill and look for, um, any medical books that you can find there. Most of the time, if you're in an area right now that's allowing people to shop at places like the thrift store or Goodwill or something like that, um, they have a lot of really good books. People donate their books all the time. I've seen tons of medical dictionaries. That's where I get my medical dictionaries from is the Goodwill. And it's like, what, two bucks? You know, so, I mean, there's lots of different alternatives to finding resources that are cheaper or free. So always try to look for those things. Never think that you have to pay uh, so much money for books. And there's always a library if the library is open in your area. I'm just saying, you know, um, but that's always going to be an option. But um, when you are learning in the beginning and when you haven't gotten a job yet, uh, it's the confidence is going to come with time. It's going to to get there eventually. It's you're not going to just go into it and be confident. When I started, was I 100% confident? Heck no. <laughs> but I know in myself that I'm a reader. So because of this, I, I was okay with that because I knew there was going to be things that I had to learn. And taking taking that um, pressure of I got to know everything right out of the gate, taking that pressure off of myself really did help. So the time management and um and and re and re knowing how to recall things is going to come with time you don't have to memorize hundreds of things you just have to know where to find the answer okay uh, you do get to use your books when you are um, out there in the world coding uh, i don't know what specific credential you have because you say you have a certificate in medical code medical coding and billing so you didn't say what credential it is so um but with time, again, you will be able to get more confident. You just have to believe in yourself. And that's a lot of what it is, is believing in yourself. Uh, no one can give that to you. I can, I can tell you um, that you can look into yourself and be able to uh, get that confidence. But the only one that's going to believe it and actually walk the walk and talk the talk is you. It's not me. I mean, I can tell you. But again, it's, it's going to be entirely up to you. So uh, I'm a firm believer you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, I am also, am also a firm believer of I'm not going to let anybody or anything stop me from doing the things that I want to do. So that's my advice for that one. Next comment. I am a male and I feel like I would be looked down on as if it's a female field. Somebody that wants to get into medical coding and they're a male and they're saying that they feel people would look down on them because this is a female field. It is not a female field. It is woman dominated. Yes, the vast majority of us are women. Uh, it does not mean that males can't do this. And the thing is, if you let something like your gender stop you from doing something that you want to do like this, that says a lot about what your future is going to be if you keep allowing things to stop you. You can't allow, oh, just because I'm a male, I, I, I'm going to be looked down upon. Actually, no. Um, males are actually welcomed more than anything else in this field because there are, they are very rare in some instances. Um, and it's good because I think it balances out the, the departments when you, when you bring in males because for some women, they work better with other men and some women work better with other women. I mean, it all, really all depends. But I think when um, the, <laughs> the, the, the genders get neutraled in, in departments, you have an even number of males and females. 
I think it's a really good thing. I think males would be really good medical coders. And I know quite a few really good male medical coders. And they have very successful careers. One is very young. And he graduated high school. He got a certification. I am incredibly proud of him. And it, it, I mean, to me, I know he is going to do quite a lot in his journey. And he's already done so much. And he's very young. And he's a male. And all he has is his credentials. So I know he's going to go far. So if you're going to let something like your gender stop you from doing a, 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 a career like this, I don't know what to tell you. All I can tell you is that you shouldn't let anything or anyone or anything like gender stop you from doing a, a field that you want to do. That's just my advice. Next letter. Thank you for this video. I, for one, am not a big fan of writing, but I know it is something that I must do, so I work on that every day. I am also a not a note taker, but I know this is something I also need to do, lol. Blue, I love to read, but when it comes to reading things that have big words I don't understand or I can't pronounce, I stop reading. That's a big challenge for me, and I wanted to ask you, what do you, what may what you may do to get through reading things that you don't understand and or can't pronounce uh, or if that's a challenge for you. Thank you. Yes, actually, I do have a difficult time with some words. Sebaceous was a word <laughs> that I had a hard time with. Don't ask me why I insisted on calling it Sebiscus, but I did. Uh, but I know the proper term for it or the proper pronunciation is uh, sebaceous. So uh, when I run into things like that, I have my medical dictionary handy. If I don't have my medical dictionary handy, what I do is I uh, look for context clues to sort of figure it out. If not, then I go to the final resource, which is Google, and I ask Google what is uh, the definition of this word. And, and then usually I'll hear the pronunciation, but I don't let that stop me from, from completely reading it, uh, medical documentation and medical terminology is a completely different language. People don't think that it is, or they often don't look at it uh, as such, but it is. It is one of the hardest things to learn because, yes, some words are going to be very difficult and some words you're going to have to uh, point them out and say, can you pronounce this word? Because even doctors have a hard time pronouncing some words too. I mean, it happens. Not everybody can read this stuff. These uh, medical terminology is made up of Latin and Greek words. So if, <laughs> if you get really good with uh, Latin and Greek words, hey, you know, but uh, it, it, that is part of the reason that it is difficult sometimes to pronounce some of these words. But you can't let that stop you. Uh, if you if I was to let everything stop me that I didn't understand, I, I wouldn't be this far. In, in my knowledge base and in what I know and being able to share with all of you guys. There have been questions that have come in um, to the channel and I have to look them up. And I have to do research in order to find the answers to give to you guys. Uh, because I know sometimes it gets frustrating and people don't want to look up the answers after a while and they're just like, can you tell me what it is? And I have to look it up myself because I don't know some of this stuff. Um, especially some of the specialty questions that I get. If it's not my specialty in particular or one that I have had a lot of experience in, I even I have to look it up. Uh, but that's part of it. And, and understanding that doing the research and, and being around things that it's, it's going to make you uncomfortable because you don't know it <laughs> is part of it. You have, to get uncomfortable. you have to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. That's what I always say. You have to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Are you going to know everything? No. Are you going to be able to remember everything? No. Do you have to know how to look things up? Yes. Do you have to know how to be able to recall these things and take notes if you need to? Yes, you do. Taking notes is really big. And I know that you say you're not a big fan of writing. And I know that uh, a few days ago, I, I was telling everybody in the audience that if you are, are somebody that says, I don't like to write, I don't like to uh, take notes, I don't like to do this, I don't like to do that, you have to get that stuff out of your head. 
when it comes to being a high caliber medical coder, that's what you want to be, right? That is what you want to be. Uh, at least hopefully it is. If you want to be one of those ones that just passes along and just be like, okay, I'm just here to collect a check and go home. These videos are probably not for you. Uh, because when I say things, I say things very detailed. And a lot of times people are, are curious because they're like, is it really all of this? This is what is going to cover all of the bases. When you are highly detailed and you're high caliber, that is what's going to make you even more valuable. There's a benefit to being very valuable. Okay. You'll be in demand and that is what you want because medical coding, uh, medical billing is a very small field. There is literally 10 degrees of separation between you and the next person. You may not know anybody at a particular facility, but I guarantee you somebody knows somebody that you know. So again, you, you want to have that reputation. I have a reputation now. Yes, I know. I know I do. Uh, <laughs> but one thing that is not that they cannot dispute is that I am a very good coder and that I'm very high caliber. I will say that about myself. Is it a little, uh, yeah, yeah, it is, but it is true. I work very hard. I study all the time. I read the new England journal of medicine on the weekends. I, <laughs> I do crazy stuff just to make sure that I am always studying and staying ahead of the game because that's what it needs. That's what it takes. So you have to sort of remove your own, oh, your own personal biases of, I don't like to do this. I don't like to do that. There's people that get very nervous. Even I get very nervous when I have to go in front of an audience. Sometimes it depends on the providers that are in the room. Some providers are more uh, intimidating than others. And some people will tell me, Blue, I can't, I can't get in front of Yes, you can. Well, I don't like, no, nah, I don't care. <laughs> you can, you can. And the more things that you say you don't like to do, the more you put yourself in the situation where you are doing them, the better you're going to get at them, the easier it's going to get, like getting in front of an audience. That's going to get easier. These videos, if, you, <laughs> if you've seen my first video way back in the day till now, you'll see a huge difference in even my presence on these videos. Before, I sometimes like I, 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 I've gone through the video, I had the other camera and I was going through it the other day. And I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I talk so quiet and so slow. I was like, and I know that day I had filmed, like, I, I think I had done like 13 or 14 takes. I mean, I literally was trying to get it right and, and, I, and I still don't know how to edit. <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get this right. And I was so exhausted by the end of the day, but I was like, you know what? This is going to be my first one, the sink or swim, like it or not, you know? And if you look on some of these other videos for YouTube, they tell you to release 32 terrible videos. So that way you can get more uh, confident. And I'm more confident now with you guys. I still listen to the playback sometimes to help myself uh, in how I'm speaking at things. So it takes time and it takes energy to do all of these things, but it has to take you doing things that you have to step out of the norm. Otherwise, you're always going to have the same sort of job field that you've been in. You're never going to get to a place uh, if you don't if you don't allow yourself to have these new experiences, these uncomfortable experiences, if you don't allow yourself to have these, you're going to be in the same place. And that's called no growth. And you can't do that because we only get one rodeo, folks. One rodeo. I talk about this all the time. It's one rodeo. And people will be in these jobs. They'll do jobs for 20, 30, 40 years. And they'll say, I hate my job. I hate doing this. I should have done this. Do you want to be one of those people? Or do you want to do something like, gosh, I can't wait. I can't wait. For me, I am like that. This is not work. Medical coding is not work for me. When I go to the office, it's not work. When I have to go to a meeting, like other coder meetings and stuff like that, yeah, that's work. Because <laughs> I would rather be uh, reading the notes. I'd rather be with my providers. That's where I would rather be. But that's me. So, you know, that's, there's a difference there. When you really enjoy what you do and then you just you share it with others, 
that's fulfilling. To me, that's fulfilling. That makes my career, that makes me feel like I have a career that's fulfilling. And I'm incredibly blessed to have this because like I said, I went through the uh, employment office and they were the ones who set me up. The WIOA program was the one that paid for my schooling. Uh, all I had to do was get a job in the field that I was trained. And that's exactly what I did. And that's why I'm here now sharing all this information because I really wish somebody would have shared this with me when I started back then. But there was nobody like me back then. There's still nobody like me. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Uh, but you have to get out of that. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like that. This is part of being a really good high caliber medical coder. So uh, keep pushing through. That's all I got to say on that one. If, it, if you don't understand it, keep pushing through because eventually you will start to understand. And like I said, if you read through like the guidelines and it doesn't make sense, keep reading them because eventually the light bulb will turn on and it'll start to make sense. And the last one uh, it says, hi, Blue, I have a question. I know you have a lot of videos about medical terminology, but my question is, do I have to memorize every single word? I've been getting this question so much lately. Um, and for coders, may there be some words? It's very hard for me to memorize and study. Maybe my age and also English is my second language, so it's very hard for me. And sometimes I want to give up, but I really like all about coding and billing and it makes me a little sad. Please let me know how to study 1000 plus words in two to three months. Thank you so much. Do not memorize whole words. You memorize prefixes, suffixes, and root words. If English is your second language, there's a lot of people who English is their second language and they still do this field. Is it a little bit more difficult? Heck yes, <laughs> because if somebody whose English is their first language has a struggle uh, with understanding the terminology, I can't imagine what it would be like for somebody who English is not their first language. There are things that you can do. Continue to better your English. It's only gonna make things easier for you. If you continue to study English, even if you're watching a, a DVD. This is what I used to do when when um, my Spanish gets rusty because I don't I'm not around people who speak it. So my Spanish gets really rusty when I know I need to to be around people who speak Spanish. What I do is I get my favorite DVD and you're going to laugh because yes, it is. I, I'm, I'm going to admit it today. Shrek. I get the movie. I'm not kidding. I get the movie Shrek and I put the subtitles in English and I put the the voice in Spanish. So that when they're speaking it in Spanish, I can look at the screen and know what they're saying. And by doing that and listening and repeating and that way I can see these are the words and this is what this means. Yeah, it's a little off, but yes, <laughs> but it, it will help to jog my memory and it helps me to start speaking it again. So if English is your second language, this is what I recommend that you do. Get a DVD that you like put the words in English and put the subtitles in your language. So that'll help you to, to sort of start to say, okay, this is what they're saying, you know, when they're speaking these words, it will also help you with your speech if you repeat back what you hear. So the more clearer you can get your, your speech, the better off it'll be for you. And see, you just studied without studying, right? <laughs> so uh, do that for yourself. Get a DVD, put it, the subtitles in whatever your language is and put the, the voice in English and, and watch. You'll, you'll start to get a lot better because it's a lot easier for people to recite back like favorite lines from their movie, right? It's the same thing. It'll happen. I'm just saying one of my little tips, my little small tip there for you. But yes, prefixes, suffixes, and root words. That's what you got to remember. Not everything else, not thousands of words that you'll never see, but just the prefixes and suffixes and root words work on those. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Like, share, comment, and I will see y'all on the next episode. Bye.